We are on the festival Daily Buzz. Here we are with Angela Tabora and Aaron Lim from Bitch Talk. My name is John Wildman. I'm the editor in chief of FilmsGoneWild.com. Here at the Treasure Mountain Inn at Sundance, and on this segment, we're going to be talking about the film 20 Days of Mariupol, which is screening at Sundance. We have the director, Ukrainian AP video journalist, Mstislav Chernov. Mstislav, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, we, uh, our audience has not had a chance, likely, to see the film as yet, so introduce us to the film. Uh, so, 20 Days in Mariupol tells the story of 20 days, uh, starting on 24th of February with a full-scale invasion of Russia and Ukraine, which is actually started in 2014, uh, but not on such a huge scale. And uh, it's the film focuses on um, the beginning of the siege of Mariupol, one of the most important and symbolic battles uh, in, during this year, during this invasion. And it is told through perspective of journalists. However, the main focus of it is a story of the city, of the destruction and the suffering of its residents. So we see how, in this film, we see how city uh, quickly spiraling down as it gets surrounded we can see how it's quickly spiraling down into the darkness how people start panicking how they lose their re relatives loved ones and how we who we as a journalist struggle with sending important material as mm -hmm. maternity hospital bombing um, children being killed and doctors trying to save them uh, all of those shots which probably uh, many people in the world have already seen that has been shown in the UN and uh, US Congress. However, those were broken into very, very small pieces. So with the film, you could really see a scale and really how much these people suffered. There is a tremendous amount of suffering in this film because it is war, um, but I found that there was um, hope in the film as well with your relationship with Vladimir. I wanted to know if you can talk more about that. There are moments of levity and the, the beauty is that uh, we didn't even need to think about you know, when do we bring this levity, when we do we bring this tragedy. Uh, it just naturally progresses through these 20 days as film built on day one, day two, day, as a countdown. Sometimes you encounter this these moments of levity and um, as I say in the film the, the war brings the best and the worst in people mm -hmm. so people really there are people who really help us like that policeman Vladimir who uh, helped us to get the connection when we really needed to send the important footage he uh, ultimately helped us to to get out risking his own life and uh, mm -hmm. safety of his own family uh, there are other moments, uh, uh, small moments, but which they will they give hope, and I think that's what actually inspired the world. When the world looks at Ukraine and how Ukrainians fight this war, that's what inspiring. They didn't give up; mm -hmm. they they kept fighting, and uh, they um, they try uh, as good as possible to stay alive and to support each other. That's what I'm trying to show there too. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, that was very clear. Um, it, and it's it's a little hard to talk about this film with you because first of all, congratulations, you made it to Sundance. It's a great, greatly made film, but also this film is so much bigger than a film festival. Mm -hmm. I wish that you know, in order to enter Park City, you have to watch this film. It should be mandatory viewing. <laughs> um, but, but I wanna know how you switch something in your brain to be able to do this work, when you see people running from something, you run towards it. How, how do you switch something in your brain to, to allow you to do that? In the war zone, you mean? Mm -hmm. Look, so the film, again, the film tells, tells the story of Ukrainians and Ukrainian city. And I am Ukrainian, our team is Ukrainian. So it is also our story. Uh, it's a, uh, we are part of that community and so, as a journalist, but also as a Ukrainian, I do feel obliged to to do my own part in 
at least uh, recording <clears throat> potential war crimes, mm -hmm. recording for for the history um, what really happened to the city. Because you know, if the, even if the film didn't didn't make it in a Sundance, it still would be out there, still would be a, a historical record. So people maybe in let's say even Russian people who maybe in one year or in ten years would really like to know what what happened, mm -hmm. what what they have done, they they would have this record. But also people who might have missed it in U.S. or in Europe, even Ukrainians. Uh, so that would be just out there for people to see as a historical document. So all that in mind, I uh, went as far as possible to do to do that. You know, um, there are several times in the film where, of course, people are panicked. They're um, they're, they're 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 in shock, and they're lashing out at you mm -hmm. for having a camera. And <clears throat> why why are you filming this? And you know, and, and why aren't you doing something? And who are you? And and so those moments, um, as a journalist, um, as a documentarian, where it is vitally important for you to document, but it's also difficult to separate the emotions uh, itself. And I would love for you to, to talk about because I you know it's one of those things where watching the film. Um, you know, we're devastated by what we're looking at. You were right there, um, within within reaching distance of that, and yet, so to speak, you I mean, literally, you have a job to do. So talk about what what was you know what would be going through your head, you know, throughout that process. Well, first of all, those people who didn't want to be on camera, who told me, "Don't film me," uh, they are not on camera. We don't see them in the film. Those people who are talking to me but they're just angry I thought that it's quite important to show and one of the <clears throat> one of the ideas and one of the important things for me when I was um, working with Michelle Meissner with the frontline uh, editor when we were building the narrative of this film it was important for us to to give the audience a chance to experience all kinds of all kinds of reactions that we encounter. We see people who are swearing, or mm -hmm. we see people who are coming to us and saying, please film me. I really hope my relatives will see me uh, on the TV and know I'm alive. And there are actually much more people like that. Uh, in a film, there is only one person, but there are dozens and dozens of people who just came to us and please film us. Other people come and say, please film this chaos so the world knows and so the world does something. There are doctors who are just inviting us and, and asking us, please film uh, these crimes and show this to Putin. So there, and there are people who are really hoping Mariupol stays a Ukrainian city. There are people who are blaming the Ukrainian army for some reason, for bombing them. So I wanted to show this confusion and I wanted to be fair. That's the point, I wanted to be fair. Uh, to everyone. So, I want to follow. I want. Well, that answers no, your question. Well, no, it absolutely does. And and then the follow up to that is because uh, even at the end, we, we we see how literally the footage, um, you know, that 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 you secured, um, is being uh, um, dismissed as fake. And you know, and in this country, we you know we um, we certainly have that debate of supporting Ukraine or not. And you know, and there and there is a very uh, strong political faction that um, you know that, that parrots Russian Federation uh, talking points or whatever. And one of the things they, they immediately go to is all this footage we see is fake. Um, I have to imagine, I, you know, again, as as, as any filmmaker, um, that's tough to hear and that's tough to combat. But in, especially in this case, because you were there, and you know, and 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 you know, you know. You, you, because you were there, you know what you saw. Can you talk about emotionally? How, I mean, you know, here we're at Sundance, and 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 and, and, and we are, we're, we're, we've got a big audience for this film, and as yes, Ange good. and as Angela said, hopefully, we will get a bigger audience for this film. But still, you're a person, and you know, and and and, and so, talk about again, you know, how how you handle hearing that. Huh. 
I'll start with this. So there's another film premiering at the Sundance, another Ukrainian film, very important film, Iron Butterflies, and it tells the story about MH17 downing, right, about this airplane downing by Russia. So I've been there. I was one of the first international, I always get in trouble. So <laughs> I, was one of the first, I was one of the first journalists who arrived like half an hour after the, after the crash of MH17. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was terrible. That's another conversation. Um, but what I'm saying is that that in 2014, with that, a campaign started. It's a very similar campaign, actually, to what happened in Mariupol. That's why I feel the connection between Iron Butterflies and 20 Days in Mariupol. Because, and that campaign you know, went on for, for years. Uh, the campaign to interpret these images, this, this crash, this downing on this plane in a completely different way. Mm -hmm not what the actual international courts say and prove. So when <clears throat> the, the most kind of important uh, event, I would say uh, the most shocking event happened in Mariupol, the, the bombing of the maternity hospital, the one which uh, propaganda, Russian propaganda kind of s s centered around uh, and denied and you see that in the film uh, how this happens while filming that moment seeing seeing medics and police carrying that woman and seeing how shocking that image is and seeing how iconic that image is i was already kind of thinking oh my god same thing is going to happen as happened to mh17 so later on when when we got a call uh, over the satellite phone, when I got connected to my editors a day after, and they said, well, there's this whole campaign by Russian officials claiming you are information terrorists, claiming that it's all been staged, that this is a Hollywood production, and that AP brought a, a film crew and actors to, to Mariupol. When that happened, that didn't surprise me at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was... I felt bad for, for, for these women because they were called actors. Mm -hmm. But I, I personally was prepared. And as AP journalist, and well, as a journalist, my job is not to argue with any propaganda, whatever it says. My job is just keep doing whatever I do. Mm -hmm. And just keep delivering people the information and whatever I see. Therefore, whenever when you see in a film that we go and actually search for those pregnant women for those survivors it's not because propaganda said something it's because uh, we needed to follow up the story that's what the journalists do they they find their mm, they find people who they filmed who they spoke to and they just follow up with the story with the important one so no I w I'm not trying to fight propaganda I feel bad but that's fine it, it happens uh, we just keep working. Well, you know, I mean, and, and, and we, have, we have to wrap this up, but I do, I, and, and, and now that you mentioned that, I do want to say that uh, journalism itself is under attack in this country in a major way, if not the entire world. Um, and there's obviously a reason. What we're talking about is the reason why journalism is under attack. And, you know, and, and you know, while, you know, what we're doing is we're talking about movies and entertainment and stuff like that. Technically, we're journalists, um, but we are not you. And this is one of those cases where, this doesn't always happen with us, uh, but this is one of those cases where I think the three of us uh, sit here in awe of the fact that you've done what you've done, that you made it through, and that you're here. And, uh, and it's just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Again, we've been talking about 20 Days in Mariupol, documentary screening at Sundance. We've been talking to the director and Ukrainian AP video journalist, Mr. Slav Chernov. It's really been a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Ooh, can we take a quick picture? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, think, I hope it was fine. Oh, no. you were so good. No, I just, I just wanted to know, because there are moments in that film where obviously it was rough for you, and you put the camera down. What do you do in those moments? Are you just trying to breathe? Calm yourself? Cry a little? Okay. Yeah, you cry. Yeah. You Let it out. Sometimes... You just try to find like a silent place just to reflect a little yeah. bit. That's what actually I'm trying to to show in a film. 
those moments. Yeah, no, I appreciated He's, that. And the, the thing is that, that's what's interesting about it. I've never saw those moments until we actually started editing the film. Because, you know, the main footage made it to news. But I never even remembered those moments and those mm. reactions. So as, when we started to edit, this was a discovery mm. for me. I'm like, oh, wow, I've reacted in this way and in this way. I've never thought... Yeah, because you're, you're just, yeah. you're just yeah. adrenaline. I just yeah. forgot about it. Yeah. yeah.